Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 32 foot by 32 foot basement floor. This floor is going to be four inches thick. We're using a 3500 PSI concrete with fiber mesh in it. And as you can see, it's also got radiant heat tubing in the floor. So it's going to be a heated floor. So what we're doing is we're pouring the concrete the furthest distance from the concrete truck we can reach. We usually have a plan in mind when we start pouring these floors, you know, where we want to start and then where we want to finish. And it just so happened on this one that we wanted to start the furthest away from the concrete truck. And then we're going to finish up where it's the easiest access. So we got a pretty good portion of it dumped out. We'll dump out this whole concrete truck and get rid of him before we start screeding. What I'm doing is I'm shooting a pad, a wet pad in the middle and that wet pad is what we're going to use to strike the concrete off from make a pad so when we screed it we'll have something to go by and that pad is the same height as the the exterior there the top of that white foam we got some what's called iso strip out around the outside perimeter and we set that foam right to grade yeah, you can see when as soon as I'm grade I put a little X there and that lets everybody know that pads perfect but we use that foam for expansion and contraction so you know the floor can expand and contract a little bit without having any resistance and that tends to help control some shrinkage cracks a little bit better down the road so some some people want that some people don't um, if somebody asks for it then we, we usually put it up there it's pretty easy to put up comes in a roll we just spray some glue on the wall and we just set it right to our chalk lines that when we set grade so Luke and Darren are getting the rest of that truck poured out. So now we're going to strike these, these wet pads in the middle. And this is basically how we do it. We use the outside pad to go by. We use the wet pads in the middle to screed by. And that way we don't have to use any you know grade stakes or screed pipes or screed rails or anything like that. We can just wet screed right off those pads. And this is just the way we were taught, you know, years ago. This, so this is how we do it. I know some of you guys do it a little different, and that's fine. The whole point is just to be able to get it done, get it flat, and make sure it's right. As soon as concrete starts building up on those pads, you can see those guys stop, clean them off, and then we keep going. I got it a little high in there. You can see I'm raking quite a bit of high out of there, so trying to keep up with those guys screeding so they don't have to stop but that's about as easy as it is as far as screeding out a bay like that you know that's a 14 foot screed I'll have you know any links to these tools we're using the screeds the rakes the those mag floats in our back pockets and the margin trials and all that all those tools the links will be down in the details of the video if you want some See, Darren had, was, had a little high there on his pad, so we stopped, cleaned it off, make sure it was perfect before we continue to go, because we don't want it running a little high, you know, we don't want it low. Luke's really raking that concrete out of there. So there's about half of it done, got it all screeded. Now we're just going to bow float it real quick, smoothing it right out. That's going to make it a lot easier when we go to power trial this thing. So we'll end up power troweling it. I don't have that in this video, but we'll, if you want to see how we power trowel floors, I'll have a video linked at the end of this that'll pop up. You can watch how to power trowel a concrete floor. But it's important to get a good bow float finish on it. That way it makes it a lot easier to power trowel. You can see how that bow float really smooths it out just by going over it once. We're probably pouring about a five and a half or a six inch slump and what slump is is basically that's the term used to determine how wet or how dry the concrete is and a six inch slump is a pretty good workable slump the concrete we order I always ask for a water reducer in it too so they'll add a chemical in it at the concrete plant that makes the concrete a little easier to work with without adding more water so it doesn't you don't hurt the integrity of the concrete the wetter you get the concrete 
the the more you weaken it and the more likely it is to crack so we don't want to pour it too wet that's why we add that water reducer but we also don't want to pour it too dry either and, and kill ourselves so we generally are in a five and a half six inch range when on our slumps you can see how Darren turned that chute around on the concrete truck. Uh, that's just a little trick we use to help make it a little easier pouring over a wall like that. Most of the concrete trucks that we work with anyway, you can do that with. You just take that end chute off, you flip it around and hook it back on. And it's pretty safe to do that. It doesn't, it doesn't really want to fall off. So it just helps you move the concrete around a little bit better. And it doesn't splatter anyways near as bad. So Luke and Darren are getting the rest of that poured out, and I'm shooting another pad there using my laser. I, I use the Topcon RLH5B. It's a self-leveling laser, and I'll have a link for that down in the description too. I think that's the best laser to use when you're pouring concrete floors like this. It's uh, really easy to set up. It's really accurate, and it's, it's really fast to shoot your grades. There, that pad's right perfect. I put my X on it. And then we can strike our wet pad using that. That way we don't have nothing in the floor to work around. We uh, don't nothing to hit. Sometimes you might kick something if there's something in the floor by mistake and knock it off grade. So this is just what we like to do. So Darren and Luke are getting that next bay screeded. We're going to turn it and come down and we're going to go out. On this front wall that you can't see, you know, this, this has got a frost wall around it. The front wall is right to grade, so they step that concrete wall down. And that grade is the grade of the concrete wall in the front is right perfect with the top of the floor. So we're screening right off the top of the wall there. Luke is here down, down below. Let me know down in the comments guys, you know, how many of you guys have poured a concrete floor like this and how many of you guys screed like we do and bow float like we do or do you do it a little differently? It doesn't take too many tools to pour a concrete floor as you can see. It takes a screed, a bow float, some rakes, come alongs and you know your mags to mag your edges and then a, basically a laser to shoot grades. So there's not a lot of tools needed to pour a concrete floor in your boots, you know. Luke's gonna get that all bow floated and then we'll take that screed, we'll turn it 90 degrees and come down that last bay. You can see all three of us can screed the same, so that makes it pretty easy too. We can just interchange. Doesn't really matter who picks up what end. We just all pick it up and go point is just getting it done we like to get it in as fast as we can and then sometimes we'll just leave one guy on a floor like this to power trial it and then two of us will go pour another floor somewhere else and get a couple of these in a day you can see Luke finish that up with a little five foot screed Darren's gonna finish bull floating it you can see when you pick the bull float up you can see that little line it leaves so we'll just we'll mag float that line out instead of just leaving it and that'll just make it a little bit smoother a little bit easier to finish and you can see how that that concrete wall is right to the same height as the floor we call this a walk-in basement what do you guys call it in, in your area so a walk-in basement allows you to walk right in the basement without having to go up some stairs down some stairs in a bulkhead it's just right even with ground level. So if you guys don't know me, my name's Mike Day. We specialize in all types of concrete. I have videos coming out. This is my channel about twice every week. If you like that kind of stuff, you know, smash the like button. But also hit the subscribe button. You know, my videos are about all kinds of different things to do with concrete flat work. We do stamp concrete. We do staining. We do a lot of repair. Uh, we do pool decks, patios, so if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You can see Darren's just finishing up, and then he's going to mag his line out, and then we're done pouring this. So that's it, guys. That's how to pour a 32-foot by 32-foot basement floor, 
and go ahead and subscribe and come back and we'll see you on the next video.